which is the dawn of circular economy in Brazil. And uh, following uh, Michael's recipe or recommendations, I'll, I'll first introduce myself, then introduce the university, move on to a conceptual part of the talk, uh, speaking about circular economy and uh, specifically its beginnings uh, attached to industrial ecology, and then move on to what we do here at Universidade Positivo regarding circular economy. And finally, the main topic of tonight's uh, lecture, which is the dawn of circular economy in Brazil. Um, this uh, session is being recorded, and as soon as it finishes, we'll receive the link <clears throat> with the uh, recording, and I'll make it available to everybody through uh, um, uh, the emails that I have. So before I move to the next slide, I, like to, I would like to acknowledge the help I got from uh, Dr. Priscilla Gomez in preparing part of this lecture, specifically the analysis of the Brazilian companies, which will be presented towards the end of, of the session. My name is Mauricio, and I've, uh, I've been a professor here at people for almost 20, 20 years in February next year. And my background is basically in water resources. I've uh, uh, worked with many other kinds of projects, but I, I'd like to tonight just highlight this, uh, this uh, um, and having to do with uh, circular economy or water use efficiency. What I've been working most recently in is the management of water losses in water distribution networks and the microgeneration electricity in um, water distribution networks. That is, uh, re recuperating energy that is in the flow and would be wasted as heat. Uh, I put uh, two flags up in my in my slide to to uh, tell you that I've uh, um, a dual relationship with countries in my life. I've I've lived for a while in Canada. My daughter, uh, my older daughter, was born in Canada, and she's uh, also watching tonight. So please refrain from calling me bad names because my daughter is watching. Next slide. Uh, Universidade Positivo is um, about 20 years old, which is since I've started working here, but it's part of a larger group, Grupo Positivo, which um, business in education, printing, and computer manufacturing. Um, our campus, uh, whose uh, photographs you see on the slide, is about uh, just over 425,000 square meters uh, in area. This campus started uh, working in, in the year 2000. And the graduate program in environmental management, which is where this lecture fits within the university's context, is um, in its 15th or 16th year of existence it started in 2005. I've been the program chair since the inception. And since 2008, we have collaborated with uh, IFAS in, in the IMAT program. This is the second of a series of seven virtual seminars, which um, will be uh, reestablished after the summer school uh, two weeks uh, that will be during the next two weeks. So 
three weeks from now, you should get uh, the third uh, virtual seminar. So let's talk a little bit about circular economy, its uh, origin and what it's based on. Circular economy mimics the natural cycles. The best known natural cycle is the cycle of water, which is recycled in the system. Other um, common cycles are the biogeochemical cycles, such as carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Uh, but we have also to take into account the influence of men. What is the effect of our actions on the planet? And that's uh, the whole point of practicing circular economy, to decrease or minimize our impacts on the environment and make sure it will be there for future generations. Otherwise, nature will strike back, as it happened yesterday. Uh, the image you see here is uh, a, of a car that belongs to one of our students. As she was going home, there was a storm, and uh, so nature stroked back. The storm uh, made a, a tree branch fall and hit her car, shattering all glasses and cracking the, the, the car ceiling. If you're watching Mara, uh, here is your uh, reference. So she's one of those students that couldn't make it tonight. She's watching from home. So besides the material cycles, we also um, worry about energy. And circular economy dictates that we try and use uh, renewable sources of energy. And, de and, and also minimize the waste generated, trying to reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover as much as possible, aiming towards a zero impact uh, activity. Some definitions, industrial ecology, it, it, it attempts to maximize the economical use of waste and puts these um, residues as inputs to other process, processes in industry, mimicking natural systems. Uh, a, a, a book that I like to recommend is this uh, biomimicry book by Janine Benius, who is depicted here. She uh, has a very uh, easy to read narration about circular economy or industrial ecology, and she presents uh, some very interesting examples, which I'll be summarizing here. Putting things into perspective, uh, industrial ecology canons. Did I skip uh, a slide now? Industrial ecology canons dictate that we should use waste as a resource, diversify and cooperate to fully use the habitat, gather and use energy efficiently, optimize rather than maximize, and use materials sparingly, uh, that is, recycle. Uh, comparing with uh, a natural ecosystem, organisms in, in, in a mature system, they do not uh, follow their nests, that is, they do not pollute their environment, they don't drown down resources, they remain in, bi in balance with the biosphere. They depend on information to decide what the, they, they will do next. And they shop locally. That is, they minimize uh, transport distances. Uh, circular economy and industrial ecology are certainly not tree-hugging uh, occupations. They go beyond simple ecological uh, statements and they try to bring in true sustainability. That is, <clears throat> you have to look at environmental, social, 
and economic uh, aspects. That is, if you eliminate waste, you increase efficiency. If you reduce costs, you improve uh, your value chain. And if you close loops, you reinforce, you, you, you build a feedback uh, improving the whole process. So industrial ecology implies more revenue, less costs, less liabilities, uh, gives a competitive edge, uh, enhancing public image, and uh, establishing oneself as a market leader. Despite being very uh, desirable to practice, it's not always easy. There are barriers to implementing a circular, a true circular economy. The implementation depends on the suitability of the materials for reuse. Sometimes recycling is very costly and it, it, it's not economically or financially feasible to implement. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to establish uh, relationships leading to these uh, circular uh, systems. There may be organizational, institutional, and legal obstacles that need to be circumvented to, in order to implement a uh, circular economy. Uh, industrial ecology comes under very other, uh, various other names such as eco-industrial development, industrial symbiosis, byproduct synergy, area or regional meta metabolism, and eco-industrial parks. It is a fully-fledged science, proof of it which is the existence of a Journal of Industrial Ecology since 1997, and uh, uh, corresponding conference since 1998, a society since 2001, and over a hundred graduate programs all over the world that deal with um, industri industrial ecology. Uh, a fine example and the, the first one that I, that, I, that I saw when I was learning about uh, industrial ecology and circular economy is this uh, little town in Denmark, just over 16,000 people. Uh, I've been looking at this town for over 10 years, and every time I, I give a talk where I mention this town, I check what the population is, because I started saying it had 20,000 people. And uh, it hasn't increased a lot, which is a good sign. It, it shows that they are in an equi equilibrium state. So this figure I just checked today. What is so uh, interesting about them? They started by accident what has become one of the better known examples of uh, material flow, flow management in a regional uh, setting. Their industries ex exchange wastes, which become inputs uh, as they move around. Uh, as I said, it wasn't planned. The first cooperation in, uh, was in the 60s, the second in the, in the 70s, and many others in the following two decades. Uh, what are the main players there? There is a, a, a coal-burning power station, an oil refinery, a biotech and pharmaceutical industries, uh, an enzyme production industry, and a, a plasterboard or drywall industry. Further, there is a soil remediation company, the town itself, which receives some of the waste, and the waste treatment plant. How do they inter interact? For instance, the coal power plant has as inputs coal to burn and generate energy, surplus gas from the neighboring refinery, and cool salt water used in the cooling uh, part of the process. 
its pr products are, of course, mm -hmm. electricity, which is the main product, and the rest are byproducts, which were uh, considered waste initially, and then they are used by their partners. These byproducts are steam and heat, hot salt water, ash and gypsum. Here is a, uh, a graphical illustration of what I just said in the past slide. And here is um, material flow for the oil refinery. So they take in petroleum and steam, produce fuels, gas, and sulfur. Gas and sulfur used to be byproducts that were wasted. The gas was burned and sulfur was just discarded. And these things now are part of a closed cycle, which you can look at uh, more closely uh, when you get these lights, but the, let's get one example here. The electric power station receives gas, waste heat, and coal and produces sludge, gypsum, ashes, steam, and sludge. Uh, by implementing these uh, closed loops in which wastes from a given process are used as inputs for others, uh, resources were saved. For instance, 30% uh, less use of fuel by combining heat and power uh, than producing separately. There's reduced oil consumption. 3,500 less oil burning space heaters in the homes of the uh, Kalunborg town because now they use hot water from the industries to heat their homes and the fresh water is no longer used. Besides that, as the wastes were um, analyzed, it was discovered that they were so sources of um, raw materials which were not being used, such as gypsum, sulfuric acid, fertilizer, and um, inputs for a fish farm. For energy flows, we have excess gas that goes from the refinery to the plasterboard and the coal power plant, steam that goes from the power plant to the city, to the pharmaceutical company and the refinery, and we have cold salt water that's heated in the power plant and it's, it's sent to the fish farms for uh, fish growing. I've already um, spoken about the energy flows and the oil furnaces which were decommissioned. Uh, uh, a byproduct of that was that besides saving on oil, uh, uh, less fuel was burned and they no longer produce, uh, they, they no longer have an air pollution problem in the town. Salt water I, I mentioned. Um, and as the power plant and uh, um, the refinery managed to recover their sulfur, they complied with regulations and also were able to send that sulfur to a sulfuric acid industry that was created to take advantage of the existence of that, that waste. Material flows, fly ashes that are generated after the coals burned are sent to a local cement factory. The combination of sulfuric acid, no, um, sulfuric oxide, I'm sorry, 
with uh, carbon, calcium carbonate that becomes gypsum, which is the main input to the plasterboard industry. That, that did, did not exist before they realized they had such a, a valuable waste. Liquid sulfur generated at the refinery gave rise to a sulfuric acid factory. Sludge produced in the biopharmaceutical industry and at the fish farms is used in the farms themselves as fertilizer. And surplus yeast from the insulin uh, production is used as a pig feed in farms. Skip that one. The, the, the gypsum um, that goes from the power plant to the plaster bar company accounts for two thirds of its input. So almost uh, all it needs. So they have established uh, what amounts to a simple food web in which industries as organisms consume each other's waste and produce other uh, materials. This, uh, of course, for this to be put into place, some infra infrastructure had to be built mainly to transport um, material and energy. And this cost about $60 million in the early 90s. However, uh, it has produced almost twice as much in revenues and cost savings, showing that Tree hugging is not the answer, but uh, level-headed environmental management that will help the environment and also the economy. Uh, reflections on uh, what they had to do to get this thing working properly. Every new contract that was established involved negotiation between the two parts. There wasn't a, a, an overall agreement that was valid for everybody. They each had to uh, work on their um, specific needs. And it, it has to be attractive to both sides. And despite identifying uh, other possibilities, the companies have decided to stick to their core business. So whenever an opportunity was found, they would rather um, have someone start a new company, then uh, incorporate the new um, activity in their business. So they each uh, try to minimize risks and they, uh, they are free to decide good for them or not. So there is no imposition of the community. So this is one of the best examples that I know and that it is well uh, reported in, the, in, in, in Janine Benio's book, the book I mentioned uh, so many slides back, the book entitled Biomimicry. Uh, I, I surely recommend it to everybody. Okay. So this is the, the setup. Now let's get local. What have we been doing at uh, Universidade Positivo? And then when did, it, did we start with it? We looked at our uh, campus in 2010. Uh, as you may see, names and titles. Uh, this was um, a diagnosis and proposal for emission reduction in which we looked at material flow and energy. And I'm, I'm glad to say that <clears throat> almost all of these uh, recommendations have been uh, put into place. The only thing that has not uh, been done here 
is the construction of, bio of a biodigester because our scale is very small and if we want one we will have to probably build it ourselves. But we're hoping that one of our new students will take that uh, challenge and, and have it working in a year or two. At the same time, we were also starting uh, with a life cycle analysis. And this is an example in which uh, the student uh, looked at the life cycle of uh, concrete mix. And she went all the way back to uh, resource extraction. Other works that have been done here, those first two examples were in the undergrad level, they were undergrad thesis, uh, whereas uh, the list in these uh, following two slides, this one and the next, are um, graduate thesis, either master's or doctoral. So I've, I've put them in the uh, chronological order and you, you can see that the, um, the, 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 the scope is wide and broad. We've looked at health with many kinds of waste management, such as, such as health. Uh, um, and the following slide, you'll see e-waste, you'll see corporate waste here, um, tire reuse. At, at one point, there was a big discussion in Brazil if it was um, legal or worth it importing used tires from other countries to remanufacture them and uh, um, sell them as remanufactured tires. Uh, from a circular economy or from a, an economical point of view, view it made sense. But the main concern was health because with the tires could come um, larvae, that would uh, carry new diseases into the country. So that, that was the biggest argument against it. The, the person that did look at that problem was the lawyer for the tire importing company. After that, some law was changed and they had to close, uh, they had, they had to close shop. I don't think that is uh, done since then. Uh, we've looked at um, carbon credits, clean development mechanisms, um, greenhouse gas inventories, um, water use, material flow management and specific uh, settings such as construction sites. Next, um, energy and waste on campus, uh, green building certification, uh, a full study of uh, eco retrofitting a, a, an industrial park in Angola, uh, specific uh, environmental analysis of um, glass fib fiberglass uh, cables, um, textile sustainability index. Um, Emission management, zero emission nature protection area certificate, that's our latest IMAP thesis. Um, E-waste management, um, water use in agribusiness in the Amazon, and uh, obtaining energy from uh, the sludge from sewer treatment uh, or management aspects of it. Now, circular economy in Brazil, and this is what uh, inspired the title of this lecture, because uh, here at Universidade Positivo, we have been talking about circular economy for 11 years now, which is the time we've been partners with uh, IFAS. And since then, circular economy was uh, 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 an unheard of expression among our companies and government sector. But when I picked up a, a magazine last year, and the cover of this magazine is depicted here with the baby on the cover, and if you look closely, there is a, a circular area with a blue backing. 
that says sustainability guide. This is a business magazine um, that is well uh, established in Brazil. This is its, I think, 1,150 issue. And they have an annual issue that uh, acknowledges the most sustainable companies in the country. They uh, had a, just over 70 companies that were listed in last year's uh, issue. And to my surprise, as I read through the, the magazine, cover to cover, more than half of these companies use the expression circular economy. So I thought, here is the birth of, the birth of something. And this is what I want to focus on for the rest of this talk. Uh, and I will also, I will also show you uh, what has been done specifically in mentioning circular economy in Brazil in scientific publication uh, next. Something went wrong here. Let me go back to the slides. When I loaded the slide show here, the, the environment uh, converted the those lights. So if you have, if you now look at the, at the screen, I'll show what the slide should look like. It is 49, here we go. Anyway, it's a list of the publications by subject. showing what has been published uh, about circular economy in Brazil uh, using those two search terms. Circular economy has to be together and Brazil has to appear. These terms could be in the title, in the abstract, or in the keywords of, uh, of a published paper. And until then, if you spoke about circular economy in Brazil, what you would think of would would, would be just the wrong coins that we, like every other country in the world, have. So what has been published? Uh, 11 papers I found that match that description, and you can see that they are uh, wide-reaching. Um, most of them are specific to a, a, a product, such as the furniture, used tires, coffee byproducts, wood-based composite, um, waste, bio-refinery uh, cassava starch for packaging production. Um, so there, these are specific to products. And then there is um, one uh, publication about public policies, one about um, natural resources footprints, one about selective waste collection, uh, one about eco-retrofitting uh, an industrial park, and one about power generation in aviary, aviaries. Uh, that is, you take the waste and you generate energy. Back to our slides here. The next one should be OK. So going back to the companies listed in, in the sustain, sustainability guide, what we did now and that's where uh, I acknowledge the help of uh, Dr. Priscilla Gomez. She did the study. A, uh, circularity level of these companies. Why? Because we suspect that uh, when these companies are, that they are using circular economy concepts they may not truly understand what that means 
and we have come up with a way of judging if the um, if they are truly circular or they're just using uh, an expression that they think is in vogue and that will get them uh, a good uh, image with the public. So what is this? So Priscilla looked at these um, Somebody raised their hand. Let me check. I I see images of um, Abdel Ghani. Abdel Ghani, can you see me well? Can you just wave your hand to let me know everything is okay? All right, thanks. So moving on, uh, levels of circularity. At the lowest level is simply recovering a, a, a product or recovering energy. You could send a, a material to incineration and recover energy, which is a, a, if you ask Michael, he'll tell you are nuts that you would be burning money if you use incineration. Recycling is the next level up. Repurposing, remanufacturing, refurbishing, repairing, reusing, reducing, rethinking, and at the highest level is to refuse. What does that mean? to make a product redundant by abandoning its function or by offering the same function with a radically different product, which is uh, what we call a uh, disruptive uh, technology. So anything disruptive would, would be listed as with a top circularity level. And what, what, uh, what we did, we look at these uh, companies listed them one by one and checked. And that was Priscilla uh, checking the, the reports for these companies to verify which of these levels of circularity they um, actually achieve. So the top, uh, the top three levels, which is refuse, rethink, and reduce, are considered high level. The following one, two, three, four, five levels are considered medium circularity. And the lower two, recycle and recover, are considered low circularity levels. And what do we get? This was done individually by company and also by uh, combining them into sectors. So what can we, can we say about circularity strategies? The most common strategy, as you see here in this uh, pie graph, is uh, reducing, followed by reusing, and so on. And the least used is recover, with the others in between. Uh, when, you, when you classify these companies by their circularity level, surprisingly, a good portion, over 53% of them, are in the high circularity uh, level. On the other hand, almost 39% have no circularity level, and uh, about 4% each for medium and low. How does that, uh, split by sector?
The first bar here is the agribusiness and wood sector. And you can see that uh, what they do the most is reduce. The following one is hygiene and beauty. Also with uh, most, efforts is the, most efforts in the reduction part. Information technology, all it does is recycling. Steel production and mining uh, use a, a mix of strategies. Food and drinks mostly uh, reducing and recycling. Health services, no circularity at all. Logistics and transportation, uh, reduction and rethinking. Energy and electricity, refuse, rethink, reduce and reuse. So the top two and um, lower ones. Construction industry in Brazil reuses reduces and uh, repurposes, I think, that's what I see here. No, rethinks, rethinks. Pharmaceutical, refuse, very good. Rethink, which is also excellent, and reduce, which is uh, common. Chemical industry, also in the uh, high, circularity with refuse and rethink and uh, in the middle part financial services nothing nothing to sp to speak of and whatever we, we couldn't classify we grouped as others and they have mixed uh, circularity strategies next By looking at the levels of circularity of the companies involved in each of these sectors, we gave, um, we classified the sectors. So the sector with the best uh, performance, in our opinion, is uh, agribusiness and wood. With eight companies, Michael, you want to say something? You raised your hand. Mm. The vertical axis is the number of industries in that sector that were classified uh, in that level. So the green is high, I mean, the blue is high. So eight companies in agribusiness and wood score at the highest circularity level. The next sector is hygiene and beauty. And in here, four companies scored high and one company had no circularity off, uh, to speak of. Information and technology, one company scored low and three scored no circularity. Steel production and mining, three high, one medium, and one none. Food and drinks, all three classified as high. Health services, nobody uh, with circularity. Logistics and transport, um, all four with high circularity level, and so on as you can read from the list here. Mara, you have a question. Could you type it, please? While she types, we we keep on reading the, the graph.
Uh, let's, let's play some waiting music here. Would it be correct to say? I don't know the, those words to any song. So pharmaceutical, too high and too none, financial, all none, others are mixed. Agribusiness has the highest, has the highest circularity level, yes. Due to biofuel, um, not necessarily, no. Uh, they are, they are uh, mixed uh, industries, not all of them are in biofuel. So it's different strategies. Uh, it could be simply by reusing the waste, such as extracting uh, the byproducts that are used in other industries or extracting energy and so on. But as you will see in about, um, let me see how many more slides, maybe, oh yeah, in, in about five more slides, you will be able to uh, help answer that question, Mara. And here's a heat map of circularity level by sector. So, the red is the highest reach, heat, and white is the lowest. And it's just another way of information we had in the other graph. So I'll just go uh, quickly. And here we have uh, circularity strategies by sector, showing how many companies in that, in that sector uh, use each strategy. So some examples. Uh, and the higher level strategies. A chemical company, uh, developed a, a, a high performance paint and decreased the size of the packaging. It created a cement additive that additive that requires less water in the blend by about 40%, which is a, a large gain. It also developed a biodegradable plastic made from cornstarch and it replaces uh, land transport by sea transport whenever possible. A sugarcane ethanol company uses uh, second generation ethanol, cellulosic ethanol creation with straw and baguettes, uh, also use, being used to produce ethanol, just, uh, I mean, a refuse of the process is reintroduced into the ethanol production. So this allows a 50% increase in production without increasing planting. Uh, consumer goods company uh, attracts suppliers 100 percent of agricultural materials must be sustainable by 2020 and they have a program called producing right that encourages sustainability by suppliers medium level strategies a steel mill they look for solutions um, to use uh, to employ used steel and steel slag uh, returning that to the kiln and and uh, using it to produ to produce a, a road paving product or selling it for cement companies and they've implemented a water management uh, program through it through which uh, ninety eight percent of the fresh water is reused. We are four slides from the end, so hang in there. 
uh, an energy production company implemented a social environmental project promoting proper disposal of old appliances and for each um, old product that is donated the uh, customer can earn up to 50% discount on the purchase of a new appliance and why is that good for the company because they would use less energy and Mean, mean that the, the company would not need to invest to uh, provide more energy. And lower level strategies, we have a lubricant and collect, uh, collection and recycling company that collects uh, oil and from the 100 barrel, from each 100 barrels it collects it produces 70 barrels of oil as good as new, seven barrels of water, water, and the remaining 23 barrels are used to produce asphalt. It, it also collects used oil at 70,000 points in more than, third, uh, in almost 4,000 uh, municipalities, and uh, it certifies uh, the collection uh, when it's necessary. They account for 40% of the national supply of Group 2 oil, the rest being imported. Uh, a computer equipment uh, company created a system to recover uh, discarded brand products and use the recycled material in the manufacture of new products. And finally, a, a packaging products company uh, produces pallets from its discarded packaging uh, using plastic aluminum. And all in developed countries, the company already has a fully renewable packaging but in Brazil, because of the costs involved in production, uh, renewable content falls to 82%.